Hi, I'm Elias. I'm part of the Youth Action Committee for the Schizophrenia Society of Canada, and this is my mom. Hi, I'm Trish. So today we're going to talk about having conversations about cannabis. And we've had a few of those in our, uh, in our life, eh? We have. Yeah. We have good ones and not so good ones. <laughs> it's been a learning experience. Yes. So I remember like the first one that we had uh, was when you found some of my pot in like the laundry. So it was in my pants and then I went through the dryer and then you kind of like sat me down and like from what I remember of it, you just kind of said like, oh, we know this is yours, like, we found it, just kind of be safe. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that. I do remember it was a bit of a shock. And, uh, well, other family members of mine smoked pot, but I thought you were a little young, but mm -hmm. didn't want to alienate. So, yeah, tried to keep it calm. Yeah, I know I was like really quiet during that whole conversation. I just mm -hmm. kind of sat there and I didn't know what to do and it was felt kind of felt kind of awkward. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know what to say or like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is it is pretty awkward cuz you can't really um jump down your throat because well, when you've done it before anyway mm -hmm. as I have in my young younger days is it's hard to blame somebody for doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. so you kind of try and say, well, maybe it's not the best thing to do. Yeah. And I know, like, we didn't know much about, like, the effects. Like, what could happen or yeah, anything no. like that. No, it didn't. I mean, and especially now it's so much stronger. It's, it's, it's so much different now than mm -hmm. when it was when I was a kid. Yeah. Like a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and i know in, like the time leading up to my my episode of psychosis it was like it became harder and harder to have those conversations because i you know i got like really entrenched in my my worldview it did. and it did, yeah, yeah you yeah. were very defensive about it about the whole thing and it, it, yeah you didn't you didn't believe that there was anything that that anything could be going wrong Mm -hmm. even though school wasn't working very well and uh, you'd spend a lot of time in bed <laughs> things in yeah. your life didn't seem to be going very well but yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it's hard yeah I know like at that point it felt like the only thing I had like I know you guys were always there for me but it was it was tough and it was like the one thing I kind of went to 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 cope with everything um, yeah what what you learn from those conversations, like from the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so to speak? Um, you you really, I mean, there are times when you just get so angry, like just listen to me. You're like, kid, you should be listening. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. when you're, I mean, you're old enough to make up your own mind, and there's not much I can do about it. So the only thing that you can do, is, be there and be open and and try to explain that, that definitely isn't doing you any good i do remember when i poked your bomb though <laughs> Ooh, i was pretty mad about that oh, man. Yeah. yeah that wasn't good yeah <laughs> so i know yeah. there's a lot more resources out there nowadays about like talking about cannabis too and... i know but i think like once you get like i don't i don't know i'm speaking for you but it seemed mm -hmm. like your friends you had your your circle of friends sort of were people that smoked cannabis and people that enjoyed it and people that that you know school wasn't that important really so once once you get stuck or once you're in that it, even though you can explain that these things are really not good for you it's very hard to to for for the person who's doing cannabis to sort of back off and say no that i maybe you're right mm -hmm. until yeah yeah and i know like one of the things that i really appreciated was that like i did have like freedom to kind of experiment so to speak like there was a lot of attention at some points and like especially when i was still at home like it got it got rough but then once i was like out of the home like you you guys kind of trusted me enough to to like sort things out and then when things got bad you were you're there for me yeah yeah it's 
I, I think the hardest part as a parent is just to to let go a little bit. You have to let go, uh, although it almost kills you sometimes to let go like that because what do, what do you do? You can't stop them. You can't even like when you were eighteen that mm -hmm. you have absolutely no rights. You can't. I can't. You know. I can't make you do anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> So you just yeah. gotta be there and and sit and hope and and listen. Yeah, I mean that's part of like growing up, right? Like mm -hmm. I went from being a kid to having full fledged adult privileges, and yeah. I didn't always make the best decisions with them. But well, like, nobody really does. But yeah, then in the end, you did listen. But you had a lot of help too, not just mm -hmm. us. You had some. You had some really good, uh, a lot of help. It's with your psychiatrist, with social workers, mm -hmm. with the first episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like all all throughout Ontario, pretty much. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like it's part of Epi programs. That one, yeah. first one in Ottawa, on track was really good. Yeah. Yeah, and they helped me a lot too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's part of it too, because I know, like, I didn't always just have conversations with you guys either like you encouraged me to go to like counseling and yeah. like you yeah you connected with me we meet with some like therapists and like different people I could talk to and yeah yeah but it's also trying to get you off the internet you know there's people out there that say mm -hmm. no there's nothing wrong with it yeah <laughs> fake news <laughs> yeah 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 because it it does have like dangers like it's one of the the substances that most people that a lot of people get like checked into like rehab centers for nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And like back then I didn't think like you could get addicted to cannabis or whatever however you define like addiction or whatever, but yeah. I didn't think it could cause problems. Like all this stuff I was reading was like, Oh, this is like a miracle drug. It's like it cures depression, it cures anxiety, it cures everything under the sun. Just take it, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I think I yeah. think in certain uh, doses and certain uses, yeah, this ha it, it is a wonder drug, but it's not for someone that's in high school, un unsupervised. <laughs> it's uh, it's hard. It's I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was an unregulated market back then too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't do any, like, harm reduction, like, oh, like, stay away from, like, the high THC, or... And then nowadays there's stuff like shatter and... I don't even uh, know. Oils, I... yeah, yeah. <laughs> and out of the scene for a little bit, but... A long time. <laughs> yeah, I know at work, like, there's a... There's a lot of, like... There's a lot of use of really high-potency cannabis. It's pretty scary, actually, yeah. because... There still is all that stuff on the internet that says, no, it's fine for you. And a lot of people that have been smoking for a long time they they're used to it mm -hmm. but they don't have young brains anymore so like young brains is it's really bad it's really really bad for them i don't know if i'm making sense but <laughs> yeah yeah i mean like <laughs> but there it's are dangers very but... hard to uh convince someone that doesn't want to hear about it yeah and i think the reason like our relationship kind of like was maintained is because like you didn't you didn't try and convince me really like you made it known that like it wasn't well, you're probably the hardest good. person in the whole wide world to convince <laughs> anything i mean like people people like are like that like yeah yeah and like i found like your support in like kind of listening and connecting me to people and like giving me space as well was really helpful because yeah. like that that want to like overbearingly tell people what to do isn't isn't always effective either no no it's not effective but there are times when you just feel like yeah mm -hmm. yeah just listen <laughs> <laughs> to what I tell you to do. <laughs> so, yeah, you do get, but you do, I mean, I'm pretty sure we must have said that at some point as well. But then you back off. Because it's just so frustrating when you won't listen or you can't listen or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And 
I know you did a lot of listening to me. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Just kind of like, like trying to figure out what's going on and like what you can do and how it could kind of like keep the peace. Yeah. Keep the peace and try and get you through high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Finish it up. Yeah. 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 I know once I was like outside, like out of like the immediate environment, like it, it became a lot easier. Like when I came home for like, reading weeks and stuff breaks like there was a lot less tension because there wasn't the constant like are you smoking like you need to stop this like yeah 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 because we yeah but you also you were doing you were doing things so there was a point in in sort of in high school in grade 11 12 then mm-hmm. when nothing was happening like you wouldn't you school wasn't working either right mm-hmm. yeah so that yeah. was when it was the hardest to sort of get you out of bed and get you yeah yeah skipping classes like no tomorrow yeah <laughs> but you had some good teachers too because i yeah. used to talk to your teachers and they would they would help out too yeah i know you know. my truancy officer of all people oh, yeah. was a really good resource and she kind of like talked to me about like cannabis too and just kind of mm-hmm. Like, laid out, like, oh, like, it's, like, important to go to school. Like, I understand you don't want to go all the time. Like, how how can we get you to, like, like maybe skip five classes a week? I think yeah. that was my agreement with her. It was like, okay, okay I can skip five classes a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Miss Forrest. Yeah, she was uh, great. She was good. The guidance counselor. She was good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she... She helped me a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she... She really listened to. I feel like listening is so important. Listening is very important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. hard to do all the time. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely hard to step back and let you make the mistakes, mm-hmm. or make the statements that that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe you're right. <laughs> maybe you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But so, hmm. if if you had to like give one piece of advice about like what you've learned about how to talk about cannabis use what would you say Mm, i guess um yeah really just listening you can say how it how it's affecting how you see it's affecting you or the other person but listening to how they feel is very important because I think if you don't listen, they're not going to talk. If you don't talk, you never, you never get out of it. So yeah, I guess listening is the most important. Mm-hmm. Backing off. Yeah. Back off. Don't bring your your. Uh, I guess biases. Don't bring your thoughts that this is just really wrong and you can't. You have to stop. Just try and back them up to mm-hmm. stop. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Mom. Is it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs>